Good evening, everyone. My name is Hainisha Malone. I am the Vice President of the West Garfield Park Youth Council. And we believe that we are the solution to the problems in our community. Our theme is Nothing With Us Without Us. The West Garfield Park Youth Council is sponsored by Fathers Who Care, which is a nonprofit organization located on the west side of Chicago within the West Garfield Park community. Again, everyone, my name is Hainisha Malone, and I am the Vice President of the West Garfield Park Youth Council. The West Garfield Park Youth Council is comprised of many young people from our community whose focus and concern is youth leadership and a voice within the community to reduce senseless violence and illegal substance use. We invite people from all over, especially young people, to come in and see what we are all about. Our show will be scheduled every Thursday at 7 p.m. Again, that is every Thursday at 7 p.m. Our show can also be viewed online at www.cantv.org backslash live. Again, that website is www.cantv.org backslash live. Everyone, I would like to introduce my guest for today. This is Reverend Walter Jones, the Executive Director of Fathers Who Care. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity to be back on the show. You're kicking off yeah. a brand new quarter or uh, 13 weeks of programming. Yep. Uh, it's been always uh, my pleasure to see you young folks uh, matriculate and, yeah. and, and get into this atmosphere. I want to thank Can TV, uh, um, Omari, Dave, Terrence, Sylvia, all of those folks over these years who have been instrumental in making sure that we have this form that you young people yep. can have a voice for yourselves. Mm -hmm. And I hope that more young people as we go into this season will continue to do, to come in, not only just be a part of the activities at the, at the agency, but come on out and be a part of some of the activities we're doing here at CAN TV. You know, we do have a long history We've had many, many young people who've come through these gates, yeah. uh, through these doors, and have moved on to be uh, extremely successful. Yep. And so I have that same type of uh, passion or belief that you're going to be just as well. Yep. So thank you again for, uh, for being the guest, you know, the host of this show, for being faithful to this show. I see your growth. Mm -hmm. I know you're a young person with all kind of interest these days, extracurricular activities at school, but I really do believe that uh, just keep on pressing, and you know my motto, opportunities. Yep. Keep pressing for opportunities, but thank you again. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, again, everyone, my name is Hainisha Malone, and I am the Vice President of the West Garfield Park Youth Council. You are watching a live interactive call-in television network brought to you by CanTV21. During the next 25 minutes, we are going to discuss how to reduce underage drinking. So today's topic again is how to reduce underage drinking, and now I have a few questions for you, Reverend Jones. Okay. Who are you, and what is your purpose for existing? Well, uh, I really kind of pride myself. You know, I like that question. Mm -hmm. uh, I think everyone should do some soul searching and self-assessments periodically. Yeah. Uh, but in, deep in my heart of hearts, I just believe I'm a servant. You know, I, you know, labels really don't make me. I make labels. Right. You know, I've committed. I ain't new to this. I'm true, true to this. Mm. I've been in this a long time. Right, right. My heart is in it. Uh, my desire is to continue to empower young people, to be that advocate for young people, to be that voice for young people, to be that conduit, to educate and empower young people, to look beyond themselves, to see beyond themselves, even though they may be from some of these uh, poverty-stricken communities or mm -hmm. uh, uh, some of these communities that's infested with so many eels, you don't necessarily have to be that. Right. So, I, I, you know, I'm really big on uh, trying to do my due diligence to bring young people together to let them know that they can be whomever they want to be. So who am I? What is my purpose? My purpose is to serve, to engage, to empower those who are less fortunate, to give back to those who are less fortunate, to help those who are needed often, and to make sure that those who need assistance uh, can come to me and I'll do my due diligence as a servant to make sure that we shake whatever we have to shake loose mm. to make sure that we can improve the quality of life for those who are less fortunate. I love that. Yeah. Why, did, why, why, why that, though? Like, what helped you find that? 
Well, uh, you know, I think some people are born with certain things and some people are taught certain things. Mm -hmm. I think God blessed me and gave me a passion and gave me a vision and a mission to empower those young people. Uh, of course, uh, I've been doing it for so long, so it ain't like I just went out there and say, you know, I think I just want to do this. Right. You know, I was driven. God has God has put that on me. Uh, have, has given me that yoke mm -hmm. uh, to be that light for young people, to be that, des you see how long I've been doing it, yeah. before you were born. Right. So I've been doing it a long, long time, and I'm not tired yet. Uh, why I do it, it ain't, you know, I do love it because I love to see young people grow. Mm -hmm. I do love it because I do love to see young people maximize their options. I do, I do it because I love to see young people see the possibilities. Right. And then I also do it because somebody got to do it. Mm -hmm. And I know in uh, in the communities, particularly on the west side, or uh, you know, there are a lot of people who say that they want to help young people, who say that they're there to provide that bridge or to bridge that intergenerational gap or mm -hmm. to provide intervention support and resources to young people. A lot of people say that. Right. But action speaks louder than words. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you're in something and you got decades and decades in it that says something yep and, and kids are only gonna respond to action they won't respond to you just telling them what you're gonna do until you do it and i know that you do it all the time and, and not only here in chicago mm -hmm. i do it in baltimore i do right. it in st louis i do it in wisconsin i do it in indiana i mean i do travel mm -hmm. and i do this work because i'm called to do it and i love to do it and i believe somebody has to do it so hear my lord send me yep i know that's right so what does National Youth Alcohol and Substance Use Prevention Month mean to you? Well, that, uh, first of all, it's a, that, that was a, uh, it has been a, a proclaimed uh, by President Biden mm -hmm. that this month, October, is, is what you reference National uh, Youth Substance Use Prevention Month. Mm -hmm. uh, the whole premise of it is for those of us who are able or those of us who have a passion for empowering young folks to spend at least this month, if you're not doing it already, but right. at least spend this month on educating and empowering young folks to seek out additional options other than alcohol and or other substances, right. i.e., the lean, the the, the uh, whatever these other drinks they be drinking, uh, the the Coronas, the you name them, you know what I mean. Yeah, I know. What you mean. Uh, the Hennessy, the the what you call them? Um, What's the name of them? The Remy. The Remy. And the. The eighteen oh nine, the Casa Mio, yeah. whatever those drinks are named or whatever they're called. Mm -hmm. Uh, young people, it's illegal for young people to consume that, right. and young people really don't have the mentality to consume it, and they mm -hmm. shouldn't do it. Uh, but also there's a, a, another ill in our community with the illegal sale of cannabis, marijuana. So, I mean, it's right now it's so accessible that young people don't have to do them but just walk down the street or go shopping, mm -hmm. and people are right there in front of you selling it. Handing it, putting it right in your face. Right in your face. Yeah. I mean, and, and, and so I guess, you know, in relationship to the month, I do it all the time, yeah. but this month is a month that we dedicate to trying to minimize some of those obstacles in the minds or the lives of young people and let young people know that they don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. Now, grown people, they, they grown. They can make their own decisions. decisions yeah. I mean, they're legal. You know, they can go and purchase it, but, you know, young people are doing a lot of shoulder tapping out in the community where they go to a store, uh, a, a, a beverage goods store, Tap on the guy's shoulder, ask the guy to go up in there and buy some for him, give him yeah, a money, give him a few dollars, and they're going there and do it. Mm -hmm. The next thing you know, you have that young person, however they may age, they may be, they still young and illegal, and, and it's illegal for them to consume it. You know, that's the start or the gateway to violence. That's the gateway to additional drug use. That's the gateway to a lot of domestic violence going on, right. and that's the gateway to additional crime. Because doesn't that um. Doesn't that affect the brain cells before the brain is fully developed? Absolutely, 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 absolutely. I'm not a chemist, nor am I a, 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 a specialist in that field mm -hmm. of, of, of the effects, but we have studied that and we have groups on it mm -hmm. that shows the effect of, of alcohol use and how alcohol kind of deadens your systems and then it, it creates in you uh, a false reality. 
Right. Making you believe that you're something that you're not or depression or uh, uh, bring about other symptoms that's not conducive uh, for good thinking and positive living. Right. Yeah. Okay. So is drinking alcohol legal for recreational use in the state of Illinois for you? I'm going to ask you that question. You asked me that question. You already know the answer. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to ask you that question. Uh, what's the answer to that question? No, 100%. Absolutely not. You know, according to state law, uh, people are supposed to be a certain age in order to purchase alcohol. Now, purchasing alcohol, be it for recreational, social use, however you want to term it, is illegal for young people. I'm assuming when you say young people, you're saying young people who are not legally able or right. legally, uh, yeah, able or, or, or of age to go and purchase this. Yep. So the answer to your question is no, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. However, we do know people, young people are doing it, mm -hmm. but it's illegal. Right. All right. Mm -hmm. It's illegal for them to purchase it, and it's also illegal for them to consume it. So what are the consequences behind them doing that if they're caught? Well, according to the, the ordinances on the state and local level, you mm -hmm. know, they can be fined. Okay. Uh, the, the facility that sold them that can be fined. They don't, I don't think they're going to immediately lose their license, but they could be, have some fines levied against them and may have to go in front of uh, the, the business uh, consumer, uh, the city of uh, business and consumer services and have to attest or, or, or for selling that to young people mm -hmm. and or <clears throat> may have to undergo some other penalties, fines. But, you know, the way it happens in, in the city of Chicago, you know, they don't immediately take your license. Right. Uh, they, but if you, if you consistently get caught with this same situation, you can risk losing your, your business license after you've been fined for so long. But, right. Uh, but that's some of the some of the uh, the repercussions that can happen uh, for those who are found uh, guilty of contributing uh, to the delinquency of a minor, all right, mm -hmm. or selling alcoholic beverages to a minor. Uh, there there are penalties associated with it. Mm -hmm. So how are young people getting access to liquor and or beer? I think we just talked about that. Yeah, we did. I think the real issue that they are facing. Is availability and access is on not only with alcohol with cannabis as well mm -hmm. marijuana. Uh, sometimes young people may, as I shared with you, may involve themselves in some shoulder tapping uh, uh, schemes or something where they you know go down the street see some folks loitering in front of liquor stores which folks do. Yeah. And these young people go up to them and say, "Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir." Uh, listen, I give you three dollars, five dollars, ten dollars, whatever they may do, and say if you go in there and purchase me some such and such. Uh, well, that's how some of them get it. All right, that's mm -hmm. easy access, right? Mm -hmm. And or some of them folks may uh, may uh, take the uh, the beverages, if you will, the Babylonian beverages mm -hmm. uh, from their parents' house. Mm -hmm. You know, the parents may. Uh, consume alcohol, may have a bar, have a free refrigerator, may like uh, a cold beer or may like uh, uh, a brandy or whatever they may consume. Mm -hmm. And and when they're not there, their young the children may take go the into their closet, all right, mm -hmm. and or their refrigerator, however they have it, and take their the the the, uh, the beverages from the from the home. Mm -hmm. So, but it is it is easy access from what I'm gathering from talking right. with young people and from uh, research I know mm -hmm. uh, it is easy access through the purchase and through the availability at home. So, when did you know you wanted to work in the field of youth prevention? Or I don't even remember service? nothing else. To be honest with you. Really? I mean, I've done a whole lot of stuff. Yeah. I mean, I was a licensed insurance broker. I was. I did a lot of things in that field. I did a lot of work in prevention. I did a lot of work in social services. But and I did and I worked in the, in the insurance business. Uh, and, and it has even in the insurance business when I was doing it, mm -hmm. I've always had that passion and 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 the work ethic to serve young people, even though the the, the insurance business and what have you was more lucrative. Mm -hmm. It wasn't fulfilling as working with 
in social service with young people. And help build it, the next generation. Oh yeah, it's important. You know, it's important that I leave a legacy or an inheritance for my children and my children's children. It's also important that I share experiences and life lessons with young people who don't know. Mm -hmm. However, in this day and age, so many young people are being, as we may call, bamboozled, hoodwinked. Mm -hmm. They believe in the television over reality. They believe in Very social mil Oh yeah. yeah. They, they believe in social media over reality. Mm -hmm. You know, just as I was talking to a young person a little while ago, and I was asking him a question about why are you sagging? Why do you sag? Oh, because it's the style. No, it's not the style, man. And so I had to sit down. He gave me an opportunity that presented itself for me to educate him on the history mm -hmm. of sagging and the word backwards for yeah. sagging. Mm -hmm. So I had an opportunity, hopefully, to educate this young man and hope he would understand the realities behind it. Yeah. But it's the same way when I get a chance, as I'm doing now with you, mm -hmm. and I think the reason why you're, 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 you're doing what you're doing and not caught up in any negative bit, because we're always talking about it. Yeah. And then we have a tendency to use different modes of operations to show you what's right and what's wrong. Mm -hmm. And even though you're a young person and young, per young people have their own mindset sometimes, eventually, if you train up a child in a way that they should go when they get old, they would not depart. Yep. So you may have some, you know, some some curves that you might go through, but you'll come back exactly. and you'll get back on your feet. But every now and then, you know, you have to get a little tough love. Yep. You know, just like if you like using a phone all the time, a parent should take your phone because mm -hmm. that'll hurt you then, <laughs> right? Because yeah, yeah. most young people like the phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really do appreciate that too because I feel like I didn't, like most kids, I didn't, um, I wasn't going out into the world without finding myself first and then going out and then creating my identity based on everything else and what they're doing. So like drinking, smoking, um, partaking in illegal things, you know, like just all the little bad stuff that's going on and how I was able to be surrounded by people who gave me all of these opportunities and introduced me to all of these new people who had so many stories to share mm -hmm. about how they got caught up in the wrong things and how I could how I could stop that from happening to me and who to surround myself with. Mm -hmm. Because like y'all said, I can't surround myself with bad friends or people with bad intentions and expect to be to be just so successful and just be so positive all the time with all that negative energy around me. I have to surround myself with people who I wanna People who I who I could see myself being like people I could learn something from, be around people like that. And most people they they create themselves based on social media and what they see the next person doing. Oh, this rapper sagging, I'm finna sag. This rapper smoking, I'm finna smoke. Oh, this is a style. This is what's this is what's new. This is what's getting everybody hyped. But I don't feel like that should be the norm. And I really well, think everybody has well, somebody like it that. It don't take much to be a follower. Right. Yeah. It takes a lot to be a leader. Mm -hmm. And if you know the history of an eagle, an eagle doesn't fly in a flock. An eagle flies and soars alone. Mm -hmm. uh, now, chickens, they flock together. They right? flock together. Yeah. Now, who are you? Are you a chicken or an eagle? Mm -hmm. That's a question. Oh, I'm an eagle every day. Okay. So if you're an eagle every day, then you know sometime you have to be the, the, uh, be the one that set the path. Or to make the example. Mm -hmm. I feel that way about myself. Right. You know, I do have a lot of associates and a lot of acquaintances. Mm -hmm. But I'm not really into a lot of that mingling. Right. right. I don't do a lot of that after work places and stuff of that nature. Yeah. I don't hang out with a lot of people. You know, I may hang out, you know, may do some events with different people from here to there to there. But once the event is over, that's that. I'm not coming back, right. you know, to do this event over and over at the same place. You know, you know reoccurring thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it ain't something that I'm going to continuously be hanging out at this place or that place. I just don't do it. But when you get older, you understand that. Mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, most folks, when they get a little older, and you will learn too, that peace is the most important thing in the world. Mm -hmm. And so when you lose your peace, you lost your freedom. Because peace produces you know, that that, that, quaint, that tranquilness inside of you, just like your relationship with God. So if you really have that peace in you, all things are really possible. But you, if you're full of anxiety and stress, you can't function. Mm -hmm. 
Right. You know, your mind is not at peace. That's the same way if you're under the influence. Most folks who are under the influence are under the influence probably because they're trying to escape. Mm -hmm. They're under the influence probably because they got so many things going on. They're mm -hmm. under the influence because they're probably stressed out. They're probably feeling depressed or isolated. Whatever the situation may do, people do things for to, to escape from reality. Mm -hmm. I also seen this quote. It said... Um, are you mindful or mindful? So like, are you mindful to where you have all of these things that you went through and you just having it in your head and you just take all these substances to drain it away, but it's still there. Mm -hmm. It's always going to be there. Are you mindful of what's, of what's going on and how you're feeling? Are you taking account, taking your feelings into account and doing what you can to take those feelings away so that you can be at peace? Well, you know? Yeah, I like the term that you use, mm -hmm. but the reality of it is uh, most people, unless they're spiritually led, mm -hmm. uh, most people are, are just living. Uh, most folks are just trying to get by. Right. You know, most folks are just going with the flow. My friends are doing it, so I'm doing it because I don't want to feel out of place. But when you get older, again, and you got a fountain or you got a foundation and you put your feet on this rock and you're standing, you know, you're not going to easily be misled by people. Right. You may make a few detours every now and then mm -hmm. because it's the nature of people. Yep. People are curious. And the nature of learning. And that's the nature of learning. What don't break you, make you, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So most folks, uh, as they grow, they learn. Mm -hmm. It's a sad state of affairs for folks, for people to grow. And not learn. Right. Now that don't mean you're not going to encounter some situations in life. Mm -hmm. But that's what they're for. To develop you in life. Right. So what strategies are available to reduce underage drinking on the west side of Chicago? Well that's programs like the programs you're in. I mean we're trying to keep uh, young people actively engaged. Um, we got an event coming up on October the 24th at Breakthrough Ministries at 3219 West Carroll. Uh, where we'll be engaging or we'll have young people like yourself engaging uh, uh, in conversations with our superintendent, David Brown, who's an invited guest, uh, with also uh, the new uh, inspector general of the, uh, the city, inspector general, uh, Deborah Weisberg, and the consent decree monitor, uh, Maggie Hickey. Uh, and so we got young people coming out, entertainment be coming out, so young people have an opportunity to voice their concerns yep. uh, with those powerful people uh, that I share with you. It's our hope that we will have all of our elected officials, or not all of them, but as most that can come out, who will come out and support our young people, nurture our young people will come out. And it's our hope that we would engage all of these young people to be actively involved right. in this activity. Mother four, uh, also there's another opportunity you was talking about on strategies to empower where we have, and we're always uh, seeking young people between the ages of 13 uh, to 24, particularly 13 to 15, for our youth leadership and engagement, peer-to-peer -peer leadership programming, and young people between the ages of 16 to 24 to join and be trained uh, in some work readiness training programs mm -hmm. whereby these young people can be involved with activities anywhere from 12 to 15 hours a week, receive a nice little stipend of a hundred and some dollars, uh, along with other incidentals to help them to kind of get through life. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not literally uh, paying anyone to try to encourage them to do nothing different than to grow. Right. And we want to teach them job readiness skills and then place them in assignments and also sh teach them how to dress for success, teach them how to write resumes, teach them how to do interviews, mm -hmm. teach them how to govern themselves accordingly. I mean, you got young people who go on interviews now and they don't know that they're supposed to go dress like to impress. Right. You know, not going up in there sagging or going up in there like you really, like you're hanging out with the guys. Right. You're going up in there like you really want a job. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to educate and empower young folks to let their character and let their, their dress speak for them. So what is the role of fathers who care in addressing illegal substance use in our communities? Well, we are advocate. We're a mandated reporter. Uh, we're an agency that's pro-young people. We're a prevention agency, meaning that we're trying to prevent young people 
from getting involved, but you know, young people do have their moments and they go through things. Mm -hmm. uh, not only in, in preventing them from becoming addicted uh, to alcohol and or illegal substance, but be, uh, try to prevent them from becoming parents too soon. Mm -hmm. Because once they become a parent, uh, they're not now in a prevention component anymore. They're in an intervention program. Right. So now they got to go through these other type of services because now they got to be able to fella, to do the postpartum stuff, to go through <coughs> placement for these young people, uh, daycare for these young people, services for the young people, mm -hmm. nutrition for the young people, all of that stuff. So why are more young people drinking and or trying to escape from reality? You tell me. Why do you think? Um, I think it's because of all the traumas that they're dealing with now and how um, how huge gun violence has gotten. You know, because the gun violence rates, I think they went up. They went mm -hmm. up now. Always. And so with them going up, you know, a lot of kids grow, grew up in a community where it was like normalized to be in gangs. Mm -hmm. And with that comes a lot of a lot of bad things, so like people dying and things of that nature. So now kids have to deal with people who they grew up dying or people have to deal with um trauma. Yeah, different traumas that they have to depression. go through. Depression. Depression, then they go home and they have stuff to Desensitization. deal with. Desensitization. Yep. What is that? You end up being desensitized. You know, folks see so much violence and folks see so much stuff, negative stuff happening in the neighborhood. It becomes the norm, right, okay. meaning that they become desensitized mm -hmm. to what's happening. Right. Okay. And then they get into the, the habit of drinking to to escape, yeah. to curb or to try to release the that's pressure. Then once that's gone, you come right back to it. All right. Because exactly. once, you, once you come down off whatever you own, it's still right there. And then you got to do it again to keep... Pushing it away, but it's That's just what going. they say. Yep. So why is it important to have programs in high-risk communities for young people to be a part of? Because most young people have been ostracized. Most young people are ha do not have the resources. That they don't have the opportunities. Most young people on the west side of Chicago, which are some strict, uh, some poverty-stricken communities, I will say, uh, but you're so close to downtown, less than, what, 10, 15 minutes? Right. And, and it's a whole different world. <clears throat> so young people, they really need outlets. Mm -hmm. It's important that young people have a place to go where they can maximize themselves, their options, where they can learn new skills, mm -hmm. uh, where they can develop themselves. I remember when I was young, uh, my mom used to, to have me and my brothers and my brothers and family and sisters involved in after-school programs. Mm -hmm. We used to be in the drum and bugle corps. We used to be skating guards. We used to be actively involved in arts and crafts. We used to be actively involved in singing. Mm -hmm. We used to be musicians. And that's when we were young. Uh, and so she provided us options. So it's always important that young people have options so they can see or kind of have an opportunity to experience different things. Right. So can you share with our viewing audience some of the programs and or services you know of that have assisted young people in working to promote a safe, healthy, and drug-free community? The West Garfield Park Youth Council. And if someone is watching and is in need of counseling and or your support, how can they reach you? Well, you can give us a call at 773-287-5821, 773-287-5821, or log on to www.fathersucare.org. ORG, and what you can look at West Garfield Park Youth Council. You can follow us on Twitter. Uh, I believe you still got things out there on TikTok, and probably still got yeah. some stuff out there on Facebook. And so we're constantly growing and try, constantly trying to empower these young people to be their best selves mm -hmm. and to learn to live a life that is pleasing to not only God but to yourself. Right. And that you can do all things through the God that's in you. Just don't give up. Just keep on pressing. But I want to encourage you one more time. If you got some young people between the ages of 13 to 15 who are interested in some peer leadership programming, or some young people between the ages of 16 to 24 who's interested in some job readiness, after school program, leadership program, development program, job placement program, give us a call at Fathers Who Care at 773-287-5821. Uh, you can act for uh, Miss Princess. Uh, she would be able to assist you in those areas. And also, I want to encourage those who are watching to join us on October the 24th as we will be doing Town Hall Meeting 3 with the Chicago Police Department Superintendent. We have invited him out. Uh, uh, 
uh, Brown, David Brown, Superintendent Brown, also uh, some of our elected officials, uh, a new attorney, a uh, new uh, IG, uh, Inspector General of the city, Deborah Weisberg, Maggie Hickey, uh, and others. So we have, and this would be another opportunity for young people to come out and have their voices. Actually, it's going to be another pro thing going on tomorrow. I hope you're not busy at 4.30. Mm -hmm. At 4.30, they're going to be able to have a conversation. So thank you so much again for inviting me out. It sounds like it's about that time, huh? Yeah. So if you are just now tuning in, our guest tonight on the show is Reverend Walter Jones, and we are discussing how to reduce underage drinking. We would like to thank our viewers for watching. For additional information about our Youth Council, please contact us at 773-287-5821 and ask for Miss Princess.